Hey everyone, welcome to Let's Face It, the podcast where we discuss the different experiences of young people in America. I'm Johnny Dixon. And I'm Anvika Dishan. And joining us today is author and civil and human rights activist Kevin Powell. During this interview, we are hoping for you to learn more about activism and the ways you as a student can contribute to your society. So our first question is, how would you define activism? Well, first of all, uh, I just want to say thank you to you two uh, leaders, you two geniuses. This is an honor to be with you. Um, and I, how do I define activism was the question. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's you two, what you're doing right now, creating your own space, using your voices for this podcast. Uh, it's starting organizations uh, that, that, that seek to change any community that we happen to be a part of. It could be an educational school community. It could be a city or a town or a village. It can be a state. It can be the whole country. It can be the whole world. Activism is, to me, having a vision, you know, not just saying what we're against. Like, for me, Kevin Powell, I've been an activist since I was 18 years old, and, and I'm definitely anti-racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism. Um, I, I cannot support people who are anti-Semitic, anti-Islamic, anti, you know, uh, uh, disabled folks, folks who are uh, discriminatory or oppressive in any way. But I also believe that activism means, well, what do I want to see in the world? And for me, it's about love of all people, no matter what their identity or identities are. It's about making sure everyone has an opportunity to have an opportunity. It's about treating all people as equals and having kindness and compassion in our hearts. Uh, when I was uh, younger age-wise, um, and y'all are a lot smarter than I was, trust me, when you're as a teenager, I was not where you are now doing what you're doing right this very second. I, um, I didn't understand that um, I needed to have a position about what was happening in the world. Um, and so activism is having a clear, clear position. It means that you have to read. You know, one of the things I say a lot of times when I speak at colleges and universities and high schools and even grade school level is that we have to hashtag read, study, travel. Hashtag read, study, travel. If so, if you call yourself a leader, an activist, you know, you have to know what's going on in the world. You have to have a basic understanding of who you are, no matter what your identity or identities are. You know, you have to have an understanding of, 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 of your culture, your community, the country you live in. And you should also be open to learning about people who are different than you. So all of that is activism for me. And it also now includes for me environmental issues. You know, like I'm a, I'm a vegan, for example. So I think about how we treat the earth. I think about, you know, nature in a very different kind of way. I think about how we treat animals in a very different kind of way. So it's gotten, gotten broader and broader for me. But it just means that I care. If you're really truly an activist, you care about the well-being of other people. Thank completely. I completely agree with that. <laughs> and I really do love the read, study, travel that is totally true. I feel like a lot of people our age definitely fall short of the reading. I know a lot of people our age who kind of consider themselves activists and they go to protests and things like that, but they don't read a lot. And educate themselves. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of, um, like kids our age, as Johnny was saying, like they are told kind of by social media sometimes how to feel based on like the um, level of like, how much I guess it's not trending or something like that's how they like they feel but they don't really look into it further and like actually learn about the the like um what's actually going on and that it's been going on for a while and it's not just this one time that um there's this been injustice there's this injustice being done so I think that like reading and and educating yourselves is really important and I think that definitely like um like ed yeah, educating yourselves is um, the only way we can do that. I, I completely agree. You all said it so well. Um, and I, but I want to. Can I add one thing? I think um, because I think that um, it's not just your generation. Um, it's it's Generation Z. It's millennials. It's my generation, Generation X. It's even my mother, who's a, a civil rights generation baby boomer person. I think you know I've been blessed as an activist, as a writer, as a journalist, as a speaker to travel to all 50 states in America, uh, all the major cities, many small towns. I've been really, really blessed in that way. I don't take it for granted to have that privilege of traveling. But what I've seen is a lot of folks don't actually know a lot about basic American history or world history or about cultures that may be different than theirs. And so I think it's, 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 it's sad, it saddens me because a lot of us, this is why you see so much hatred and ignorance and violence out there. You know, we've seen the need for Meet the Me Too movement. We've seen the need for the anti-Asian 
uh, the, the, the fight against anti-Asian behavior in our country over the last year, we obviously Black Lives Matter has exploded. It's because there's a lot of people who simply are not just ignorant and don't read, don't hashtag read, study, travel, but it's almost like they practice what I call enthusiastic ignorance. They don't want to read, they don't want to study, they don't want to travel. And don't get me wrong, like I'm, you're talking to someone right now who's a huge sports fan since I was a kid. I love video games, I love movies, I love comedy, all that kind of stuff. But I also understand that you have to have balance. Like, I mean, I have my, I'm talking to you on my, my Apple computer. I have an iPhone. I understand, you know, these gadgets out there. We have TikTok, you know, but we can't get so lost in that world that we don't understand that when two people like you who are two dynamic leaders just saying, hey, there's some things we need to address here. People can't be afraid of it because it's something that they're not used to hearing. You know, we have a responsibility. If someone says, you know what, you can't be anti-immigrant. You can't hate people because they're immigrants. You can't hate someone because they're Asian or they happen to be black, whatever the case may be. You can't practice sexism, that's not okay. Patriarchal culture is not okay. You know, you can't be homophobic or transphobic or et cetera. That's not okay. If you're serious about being a human being, no matter how you identify yourself, then you have a responsibility to slow down and listen to people who are saying, hey, you're hurting me because I'm black, because I'm Asian, because I'm a woman, because I happen to be lesbian, bisexual, uh, transgender, queer, however you identify yourself, or non gender conforming even, you know what I'm saying? You know, and so when we talk about the importance of reading, when people don't read, when they don't study, when they don't travel, not only do they not see the humanity of other people who may be different than them, but they don't even see their own humanity because you don't develop compassion for, for, for voices that may be different than yours because you just don't want to listen. So it's all connected, you're right education 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 but it's not just what we get in the classroom it's also taking initiative and understanding that you have a responsibility to learn as much as possible beyond the classroom and then if you whether you go to a private school or a public school that school has a responsibility to teach about the identities of all the people who make up this world it can't just be from one perspective like i'm a heterosexual black male you know i can tell you for a fact i learned nothing about black women women of color women period i learned nothing about folks who are lgbtq plus and growing up you know and and what does it do what did it do to me you know uh i had a very narrow perspective on the world now imagine someone who identifies as white all they're hearing if they're only hearing about things that white people did in history and science and math etc you're going to have a sense of superiority that you do it you've done everything and no one else matters and so that's why education is critical education should not just be about reading arithmetic you know that kind of basic stuff but it should also be what do i actually know about myself and what do i know what do i know about this world that i live in that's the question yeah i, I absolutely agree i think it's like um like knowing like someone's perspective in an issue could like give you like like make you um understand their situation better and i think that exactly as you said if we only hear like learn about like the white history in school we're not going to get everyone's perspective and we're not going to have a, a open view of the world it's going to be a very narrow-minded view of like how our world was like our world's history and how our world is today we noticed that you have like very prominent on like social media and just like um on on the internet like in general so like a lot of people young people are using social media um to speak out about on social justice and current events do you consider social media to be an effective tool for um, activism and does it bring like real change absolutely i think social media is so important because if you just look at the last couple of years again if you go back to the movement to fight anti-asian hate that was that exploded because of social media black lives matter exploded because of social media the me too movement exploded because of social media social media to me is like the new flyers like when i was a youth coming up you know we had flyers we literally you know we printed out flyers we'd hand it out to people like hey this rally is happening this protest is happening here's this issue you should be aware of and I think that, you know, it, it's been incredible because you literally have billions of people all over social media. And so, I mean, think about last, the summer of 2020 in the middle of COVID, you had people literally of all backgrounds, not only in America, but around the world saying Black Lives Matter. That was because of social media, you know what I mean? And so it can be used for good. The thing that I say to people is like, just be careful. And I'm even guilty of this. I will not lie. Sometimes I feel like I go to sleep with my cell phone in my hand. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, you know what I mean? But we have to be careful 
of being addicted to these things, to these gadgets, you know, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, if you're just on social media and just wasting time and energies, if you're caught up in negative stuff, toxic stuff on social media, if you're obsessed with celebrity lives and you don't pay attention to anything else going on in the world, or you're only paying attention to sports and nothing else, then, then you're part of the problem in my opinion. And so, yeah, social media can be used for good. What I try to do with my platforms is always post something that's uplifting. I share information, I share news articles, you know, things that I think people should be aware of. You know, I'll share stuff about documentary films. I'll share stuff about albums, like music that I think people should be checking out. Because I think that um, if you know something, no matter how old you are, whether you're 16, 17 years old or older, like I am, you, you know, you know something. And so we all have a responsibility to share something that we know. But I just also think, when you think about social media, um, this is where uh, back to the education piece you both were talking about, hashtag read, study, travel, as I say, I see mad people posting stuff on social media. There's no research. They're throwing stuff out there. You can't just make stuff up and you can't just say, hey, I saw it on social media. It must be true. I mean, we got to research. We got to research. And so, you know, it's all connected. Like, I'm lucky that I know how to research, how to look for information. Let me question stuff but i'm not even gonna lie to y'all because i think a lot of older people a lot of younger people which is whack i also have posted stuff to social media that i didn't bother to research myself and it came back to haunt me like oh i should have checked that out before i posted that so we gotta be very careful with social media it's a very powerful platform to inform people to connect people but it also could be a dangerous way of mis misinforming a lot of people as we also know just looking at the last year or so definitely yeah and um adding on to like social media being used for activism. Um, I think we've kind of picked up on people that we know, um, like posting infographics and stuff like that on their Instagram stories or on Snapchat. And, but it's more kind of performative, I think. Um, and we were wondering, do you think that organizations like Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate, the Me Too movement and stuff like that, have you seen it become more of a trend at all? Like people are only posting it because everybody else is? Yeah, you know, I mean, that's a great question. And it's, it goes back to you all's first question, which I thought was a great question to come out of the box. But what is, what is an activist, which for me, is like asking what is a leader, you know, no matter how you identify yourself, a leader has to have a be willing to change the direction of conversation, create new, a new vocabulary, create new words to describe what's going on. A leader has to have vision. You know, and a, and a good leader actually is a good follower because you understand the kind of folks that you should be following. Like you two, I have no problem following y'all. You know, uh, when your mother, JD, told me what you do and who what you, what you do, A, I was like, yep, those are the kind of leaders that I admire. It doesn't matter how old or young. I think, unfortunately, we have a lot of people who are just blind followers out there. They're like sheep. And so they'll just put something out there not even thinking about it. Or think about how many people have, you've posted articles or some blog for someone to read and they're just responding to the headline, but they never even bothered to read the blog. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's problematic. And so we have to really back to your question about what is an activist i'm really opposed to lazy thinking like we can't be lazy intellectually you know we should be intellectually curious our entire lives like for me since i was a youth since i was a teenager like i see the whole world as my classroom you know like let me learn no matter where i'm going in the country if i go overseas like what can i learn in this space what new experience can i have and that's not going to happen if you're just the kind of person who's just going to post what everyone else posts. You're just going to like what everyone else likes and you don't even question anything. I think that's very, very dangerous, you know, and I think that um, what is also dangerous is when you see like the anti-vaxxers out there, the anti-mask folks, you know, saying things like, well, you're taking away my freedoms or you're trying to put me back into slavery. You can tell people who don't know basic American history because for you to equate people saying, hey, if you're not going to wear a mask, can you please be careful? with slavery, which was something that was done to my people in this country and that was done to many different types of people around the world, is just the, the a gross kind of sheep mentality and ignorance that this should be unacceptable in a country, America, that's supposed to be the most civilized country in the world. But if you look at the stuff like y'all are saying that's posted on social media, things that come out of people's mouths, you know, I don't, you know, if you don't want to get vaxxed, that's your business. But what we should think about if we really care about human beings, if I cough, if I sneeze and I'm not vaxxed, I could get it or I could spread it to someone else if I don't know I have it. But if you have a sheep mentality, you're just gonna think about yourself, you know, and you're just gonna do what everyone else, you're just gonna follow what other people are saying. And it's, it's really sad, you know, to me, 
where we are as a, as a, as a, as a human race, where this is acceptable to not question things to not think about things much more deeply and to have basic researched information. So you're not speaking out of ignorance, but you're saying, okay, this is where it is. And this is why I take this position. Research is important. It's so important. Yeah. And I think that connects back to your like previous point about how like social media is such an influential, influential platform. Um, so like if you just post anything, like people are going to, especially if you're someone with a large platform, your, your people are going to believe you because they trust you. So I think that that like is also like connects back to that point because, um, I know that in the past I've believed something because I saw someone who I follow on Instagram who I thought was like a very um, like educated person post something about it. And then I actually looked into it and I realized that it was a completely like, like, like not like they didn't know much about it and they were simply saying it because it was like a trend like as like our questions did like so much of it was just like because other people were doing it. And I think especially for people um, who don't really look into stuff like that they are just going to be influenced and that's going to be their set opinion on the topic forever because that's what they got it from so yeah i mean you know as you were talking think about what, what Nicki minaj did what a week or two ago where she posted all this stuff about the cousin you know who had some issues with uh, a body part because of of the vaccination i mean you can't you can't just say stuff like that without any proof you know what i mean again I'm not going to tell people what they can and cannot do with their bodies. You know, I don't care if it's abortion rights, abortion issue. That's a woman's right to decide what she wants to do with her body. If you want to get vaccinated, that's fine. If you don't want to get vaccinated, it's fine. But if you have a platform, you know, like I do, like the Nicki Minaj does, anyone that people follow in some way, you can't just put information out there that will confuse people further or deepen their ignorance around a certain topic. You know what I mean? Without any concrete proof. And that's 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 very dangerous. But and that, you know, you asked me earlier about social media. I think the beautiful thing about social media, it is this kind of democratic space where everyone has a voice or they feel that they have a voice. But on the flip side, the danger of social media, when we talk about what is activism or what is education or what is being a leader is when anyone can put anything out there without any research whatsoever. That's really, really, really dangerous. I'm not just talking about Nicki Minaj. I'm talking about the Trump supporters. You know, and all of that madness that's been put out there. I'm talking about folks who attack Lil Nas X for being an openly gay black male rapper and the stuff that they say about him. And I mean, it's just it's in, it's insane. A lot of things that I see, you know what I mean? Like people, we have to read, we have to study, we have to travel. You know, James Baldwin said it best in his book, The Fire Next Time, which everyone should read, which everyone should read. It's a short book, one of the most important books ever written in American history that we can't afford to keep making peace with mediocrity. That's what has happened to our world. Actually, we were just about to ask you about James Baldwin. Um, yeah. Sorry. Um, in our English class, we've been discussing the film I'm Not Your Negro and James Baldwin's experiences with like racism in America. Um, yeah. And one of the topics he discussed was about being a witness. And he believed that like part of his responsibility as a witness to the injustices in America was to move as largely and as freely as possible and to write the story and get it out. So on that note, what do you think a witness is or should be? And where do you think you stand on that spectrum? Where do I stand in that spectrum? Yeah. Wow. Y'all are dope. Great questions. <laughs> you ask better questions than I've gotten on CNN, MSNBC. Billy will tell you, many of the networks that I've been on, you you all, I'm always impressed by young people. This is what I'm telling y'all. Don't, don't, don't diss your generation too much because I think that y'all are brilliant. Um, but being a witness means being a truth teller, not being afraid of telling the truth about what's going on in the world. That's what James Baldwin represented to me. I remember the first time I read James Baldwin, I just I was in shock. I said, I can't believe someone's writing like this, you know, and it's saying this about this country. But at the same time, I said, he's still talking about love, about love, about love, because let's be real about it, you all. If love really was all over the world, would we really have all the war, all the violence, all the mass shootings, all the rape and pill, pill, pillage that we see happening. No, Baldwin was right. You know, love is the answer. Love is the revolution. And, you know, if you really love your country, if you really are a patriot, you know, I'm thinking about things Baldwin wrote, then you would you would challenge your country to do better, to be better. I mean, think about who you two are sitting right there right now. Think about 
you know, you know, uh, your identities. Think about the fact that if it wasn't for people challenging America from the very beginning, hey, you cannot commit genocide against indigenous people, Native Americans. This is unacceptable. It's unacceptable to to uh, uh, enslave uh, uh, African people and turn them, you know, make them into slaves for 246 years. It's unacceptable how we treated women of all backgrounds. It's unacceptable how we've treated the queer community, you know, how we treat poor people, how we treated people because they happen to be Jewish or Muslim. You know what I mean? It's like, what has what has changed the country over and over again, even though we're not where we need to be yet, is the fact that there were people who were not afraid to be witnesses and truth tellers, and to you all's word, activists, which is what can I do to change this, to move this needle, to make it go forward? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. And that's 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 the work. That's my work, that's you all's work. And, you know, we can't keep saying, well, the next generation will take care of it or it may not change in my lifetime. Well, something needs to change in our lifetimes. You know, what are we waiting for? That's the whole point of activism. What are we waiting for? You have to do something. You know, I believe every single day of your life that helps other people, that says that you care about other people. I mean, notice that I've talked about different types of people in this interview with you all right now. Are those people represented on the screen with me? No, but I, because I care about all people, the entire human family, even as I'm angry, justifiably so about racism, for example, I don't hate anybody. You know what I mean? I may be pissed at times, boy, do I get pissed. But at the end of the day, I realize that part of my life work is to be a truth teller, to be a witness and to do the work that helps to change things. Otherwise, I'm just taking up space on this planet. That's all I'm doing. We read um, one of your stories from your book, When We Free the World. And one that stood out for us was the letter to your unborn child. Um, because, mm. because it's kind of speaking to like the new generation that's coming and how you explained it like from your perspective, how you felt as a black person in America and in like the world. And um, we found it really interesting how you like went deep with like talking about like actual specific experiences. Was it was it difficult to like write about them? Because we read about um, that specific group bones that you wrote about in the beginning. And like, was it difficult to kind of like relive that when you were writing it? Yeah, you know, yes, writing is writing is hard. I mean, just like speaking is hard. You know, to your point earlier, telling the truth is hard. Being a witness is hard. But ever since I was a, a younger person, a young person, I, I decided I wanted to be a writer when I was 11, year old, 11 years old. So it started early for me. And by the time I was in high school, I was writing fiction. And then it really revved up when I got to college. That's when I really started to find my voice as an activist and as a writer. And so I made a conscious decision very early on, you know, uh, as I was reading people like James Baldwin, and others that I, I I need to I need to tell the truth about what I've experienced. I don't, and, and that it's also it's healing for me. It's therapy for me. You know, any art form, whether it's writing, dancing, cooking, sewing, you know, making films, making video games, anything that's creative. I believe if it's your passion, it actually can be very healing for you as well. And for me, that's what it's about. And I also think that a lot of times, again, a lot of older people lie to younger people about the world that we live in. And I don't want to scare people like, oh, my God, it's like, you know, it's, it's totally bad. But I'm like, hey, let's just be honest about it. Here's what you're inheriting, you know, and, and here's what we need to do. And let's hold our let's hold hands across generations, across cultures and identities and figure this thing out together. So that's why I write the way that I do. And I've fallen in love through the years with the letter form of writing where I've written letters to my absent father. I've written an open letter to my mom, you know, to 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 this unborn child as you just mentioned and thank y'all for reading it i really appreciate it and that i was so happy that 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 letter that was written to the unborn child actually ended up in the new york times when the book came out which was a big deal for me i was like this is exciting you know because it also came at a very deep time look what was happening in the country george floyd had just been kneed to death you know brianna taylor was killed in her sleep basically in, in kentucky and so all this craziness was going on and then you know yeah if we're honest about it if you're a person of color, if you're a woman, if you happen to be belong to the LGBTQ plus community, if you're a poor person, if you're a disabled person, if you're any group that's been marginalized, I don't care if you're poor, middle class, or even wealthy, you still will feel like your life is constantly under state of state of threat because of who you are, because we know the level of hatred that exists out there. You know what I mean? You know, I mean, think about it like this, you all, and anyone who's listening to your podcast, you can connect a straight line between the synagogue and Pittsburgh 
where someone went in there and killed Jewish people who just because they were Jewish and then the church in South Carolina just because they were black Christians and then the, the, the Asian sisters and brothers who were in that, 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 that spa in Georgia just because they were Asian. Y'all feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? And so, you know, how could I not talk about that stuff when it's happening? How could I act like this doesn't go on? You know what I mean? We have to, it's part, the, the ultimate question, answer to the question for me, for me to you all about what is an activist or what is an activism? You have courage to tell the truth. You have the courage to tell the truth. Agreed. Yeah, and I definitely think it's important, like, and you were kind of, you showed this in like your letter. It's important not to like keep your um, self sheltered from like what's going on in the world. And I think that um, a lot of times because the truth might be like really ugly or scary. Like we try to like, or maybe our parents try to keep us like kind of safe and sheltered from like all the gruesome things in the world when we're younger. But as long as we like, like I guess grew up to know like the, what's actually happening in the world, it'll like help us become better people and help us become more understanding to other people. And um, even though it might not be like the best truth and the prettiest truth it's still how our world is today and I think you definitely like showed that with how you like wrote this letter I I was definitely moved by it because you were so honest and I don't think that we should be sheltered from like what's going on in this world just because of maybe our age or because we have to be aware of what is actually going on in the truth of our world and I think like withholding the truth can sometimes do more harm than it can good um, and it, it, it gives people kind of an excuse to like be ignorant and like mm-hmm. be racist if they don't know like what's happening and what our world is really like towards like other people. I completely agree with you. And I would be remiss if I didn't say I mentioned the synagogue in Pittsburgh, the church, the black church in South Carolina, you know, the Asian spa in uh, uh, Georgia. But let's also not forget the, the gay club in Florida, mm-hmm. you know, the mostly Latinx immigrant uh, shopping center in Texas. All of them are connected. And what was what was in common? People, because of their ignorance, their hatred, thought it was OK just to take the lives of these people because they were different than them. Mm-hmm. So I would like to say um, I have hope. And what gives me hope are people like you two. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having privilege. We can't control where we were born, the circumstances where we were born, but there is something wrong with having privilege or living a sheltered life where you're not, you don't have a sense of humanity at all for people who may be different than you. I also think of something that Bono from U2 said years ago that always, always stuck with me. We need to understand the difference between charity and justice. You know, giving money to someone who's homeless or to some nonprofit organization, that's wonderful. If that's, that's what you want to do. That's called charity. But justice means that you start to think about, well, why is that person homeless? Why is it okay to, to, to rape women and girls? Why is it okay to need a death someone because of the color of their skin? You know, why is it okay to hate someone because of their, their religion and right on down the list or their gender identity, you know, or their non-conforming identity, whatever it may be. We need to understand what justice is, you know, and it doesn't matter what background you come from, but what does matter is you not go through life, no matter where you come from, and act as if you have nothing to give back to other people, that you're somehow above it all. It has nothing to do with you. We're all in this together, no matter how we slice it. We're all in this together. Um, What are some of your favorite resources regarding political and social justice issues that we can share with our audience? Resources, well, I think that everyone should read any and every book ever written by Dr. Bell Hooks. She's one of the greatest feminists of the last 40 years. She literally has written 40 books in 40 years an amazing thinker, amazing woman, amazing human being. Howard Zinn's book, number two, A People's History of the United States, A People's History of the United States is absolutely important, you know, uh, to study. And the thing I like about it, here's Howard Zinn, who's now dead, but a great historian of ours, you know, a white brother who worked at a black college, Spelman College, a black women's college in Atlanta, Georgia, as some of you all may know, who was so affected by the civil rights movement, he began to realize you know what, I need to talk about history from the perspective of people who have been left out of history. That was courage. You know, activism is not just protesting, marching, sitting in and doing things like that, all of which I have done and will continue to do. But it's also saying, let me use my background as a doctor, as a historian, as a lawyer, 
you know, to do something that can help people. And so I recommend that book. And then I just, you know, I think that people should listen to radio programs, TV programs like Democracy in America, Amy Goodman, Democracy in America, Amy Goodman. It's really, really important. She presents the news in an alternative fashion is independent media. Yep, I watch CNN. Yep, I watch Fox. Yep, I watch MSNBC. You know, I listen to NPR, all of that. But I also want people to seek out alternative media like Democracy Now!, like The Nation magazine, like The Progressive magazine, places where you have a different way of looking at some things, you know. And then the last part of it, you know, what are the resources that people should um, uh, uh, seek out? Well, I think you should start to get to know yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whether you're Filipino, Chinese, Japanese, Irish, Italian, Jewish, African American, West Indian, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Colombian, Mexican, whatever your identity identities are, who are you? Where did you come from? You know, how'd you get here? How did your people get here? You know, if you have a living relative over 50, 60, 70 years old, have the courage to sit down and have a conversation with them and listen to them. You know what I mean? Start to piece things together, you know, and you'll be amazed at what comes because how can you call yourself an American if you don't even know, you know, what, who you are, what makes up this society called America? You know what I mean? And so the re sometimes the biggest resource for us is right in front of us. It's called our families. And if your family happens to be racist, sexist, xenophobic, any of those different types of things, challenge that too. You know, ask where, where did that come from? Do it with love, but definitely challenge it, you know? And I just think that, you know, we can't take for granted that we have a responsibility to educate ourselves formally by going to school. You know, y'all are in school. I went to school. I went to college, but also informally on our own for the rest of our lives. That's so, so important. We should never, never, never be comfortable with being ignorant. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. Um, we have learned a lot. Yeah. Um, and also like, just like reference back to your book. We really loved how it was written. I really, I really like, we really loved reading it. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for letting us, um, include you in our podcast. I appreciate y'all. I respect y'all. Thank y'all. I hope that through this podcast and Kevin's responses, we helped you gain insight on what makes an activist and how you can help inspire change. We'll see you guys next time.